We have uh, Andrea Darabos, who's here with us. Uh, Tomomi Sasaki, is Tomomi joining us, Andrea? Joining yes, us. she was with us a few minutes ago. Okay, and uh, so we've got not one, but two fantastic speakers for you in this session here. Just a little bit of information about our two speakers. Uh, Andrea has uh, had the privilege and challenge, I expect, of writing a book asynchronously with 33 other authors. I bet that was a real challenge there. Uh, and Tomomi's from Japan. So uh, she says her, being quite honest here, her first uh, knowledge of uh, Finland was more about the Moomins than it was Finland, the country itself. Moomins came first, and then she understood that they came from Finland and understood more about the country. Um, and what a great uh, uh, set of characters the Moomins are. Welcome, both of you. And um, you're going to be talking to us today about, you know, we've all come uh, very used to working flexibly with the pandemic uh, location-wise, but you're to turn that on its head slightly. We'll think about what about flexibility with our time, a different kind of flexibility. So without further ado, over to you. Thank you so much, Rob. And we are going to kick off the session by welcoming you all uh, to, in fact, uh, open up for possibilities to work, not just from anywhere, to work anytime instead. And this session will be uh, for teams to create more focus and flow and for individuals. Uh, for those of you, uh, feel free to write a short introduction in your chat as you are arriving, where you are dialing in from uh, during the session and perhaps what's your role in those teams that you work in today. Um, and we are really delighted to be here. I'm Andra Drabos and as you can see, I'm here with Tomomi, my colleague, and we represent Async. Uh, so, Today, I'm based in Geneva, Switzerland. Normally, I'm based in London. Tomomi, where are you today? Tomomi, we can't hear you. I cannot hear you. So Tomomi, I think you are based in Paris today. That's my bet. And just please, if you want to just briefly check if we can hear you. Super. That's great. So then we will take the risk and kick off synchronously. So uh, as you are joining in this session, um, we will explore how to work anytime. Uh, let's move to our first uh, slide. 79% of employees based on a study performed by Slack and BCG colleagues in 2021, surveying about 10,000 employees like us around the world. 79% of us want to work from anywhere. So that's a good point. We are returning to offices in some parts of the world, um, but really it's still uh, an ongoing need. When we think about how we want to work, most of us would love to work from the beach, uh, something like surfing uh, during our lunchtime or really integrating work around our lives. This might resonate with you. How we however find ourselves working today is often tied to a computer, a device, still sitting on lots of meetings and listening to uh, various conversations throughout the day. So uh, what I often say is we are doing yoga still in front of a device, uh, but really chained uh, to that device. So we would like to liberate each of us and give you more freedom and control about your time at work. And so as we move to the next slide, we will see that um, we are, uh, as we tune into discussions on LinkedIn or on communities, perhaps even on the conference today, we often talk about how do we work hybrid. We, there are a lot of discussions about what big tech companies are doing, Apple, Google, Meta, and so on, um, and what are their policies and how are they optimizing individual autonomy, but also productivity based on the location. While this is an amazing and interesting topic, we would like to move beyond this conversation. So in this talk, we would love to work with you and reflect together on time flexibility. Better questions we should explore together is how do we work together best? And what could be our optimal conditions which both satisfy individual needs and also have the business achieve uh, the right level of productivity and service that we create? And perhaps also some practices on how can we help each other manage the system and manage ourselves. So can we uh, use some peer ac accountability around the process of time flexibility? So with these questions, uh, we can actually again come back to the very much the same study, but performed a bit later uh, in 2021, the Future Forum was 
according to this survey, we have found that most of us really would like to free up our time use, perhaps walk around or have more flexibility during our day uh, to integrate some breaks and live activities at home or somewhere else, like surfing, <laughs> into our work days. So uh, to mention this also briefly, I would like to just say that during this talk, we will be using some interactivity, some functions in the chat. Uh, you can also take notes in uh, paper, uh, in your notebooks, uh, but we won't be complicating technology today. So if you feel like you would like to listen while having lunch or walk around, you can do this. At the end of the talk, we will be uh, hopefully responding to some of your comments and questions in the chat, so feel free to uh, type them in as we go through. Uh, who we are? Okay, very briefly, I'm an Agile coach. Uh, I, I would love to get to know you more uh, in the Agile uh, Finland community and also the global community. This is my day-to-day -day work, to work with teams and really explore individuals and interactions, how we can do that better uh, uh, through better time use. I'm also a writer, I'm a hiker, I love long distance walking paths, and I'm also an auntie. Hello, everybody. Do you hear me, Andrea? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, really pleased to be here with you all today. My name is Tomomi. I'm a designer based in France and often in Tokyo, where I'm from originally. I work on customer experience and innovation challenges for multinationals, as well as helping European and American companies succeed in the Japanese market. I'm also a coach and workshop facilitator. And when I'm not working, you will probably find me on a bicycle in the countryside. And so Andrea and I and our third partner, Stefan Morales, based in Edmonton, Canada, we came together last year to launch Async. And our mission is to reset the way teams collaborate, seeing these big shifts that happen because of the pandemic as an opportunity to really change the way that we work. And so Async offers experiential learning programs to help teams and their managers achieve focus and flow. Uh, you'll see the link to our website on the slide. And yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. So quick question to everyone here. Um, how many hours are you on online video meetings per day? So think about your last couple of weeks, months, last two years. Um, come up with a number. If you have a pen and pencil, write it down. Or if you can pop it into the chat, please do so. Very curious to see everybody's numbers. An answer from Maria and maybe three hours a week. Julia says six. Less than half two hours per day. Nice, nice. Oh, Yoha has double of that. And so, yeah, we are going to try to see if we can bring that number down by half. This could be your chance if you think that you spend too long sitting in meetings. And so as our title says, we want to talk about asynchronous modes of collaboration. Um, and by that, to first uh, share a little bit of our definition, is uh, when we work without expecting an immediate response. And so this is nothing new, right? Like working across time zones, it's naturally asynchronous at times. Uh, email is an asynchronous medium commenting on a shared document, for instance, these are all asynchronous practices that have existed in uh, like office work for a couple of decades now. And we think that with remote and hybrid and just things having changed so much, there's a better balance to be found in taking more advantage of these ways of working. And to be clear, we're not advocating for full async use of time but finding the right balance for you and your team because every team is different. So we've got another question for you, um, which is how many of these outcomes, there are eight listed on the right side of the screen, how many of these do you think can happen without a meeting? And Tomo, so we'll maybe switch maybe. to the next, next slide, oh, please. Oh, sorry. Yes, this one. a peek at the chat. Okay. 
got a great answer from Julia here saying all of them. And yes, that is exactly what we believe as well. And in the next 10 minutes or so, and Andrea, why don't you kick us off with some practices on how we might gain control of our calendars again. Thank you, Tomomi. Thank you for challenging us. Indeed, that uh, quick poll on the outcome-oriented approach. Um, you may have struggled with some of those uh, outcomes. You cannot yet see yourself or your team accomplish those through fully asynchronous and so non-real-time collaboration. Why is real-time collaboration potentially bad <laughs> for a team besides the, the fatigue that it can create when you are constantly on meetings. For many of us at knowledge work um, environments, we find the, the time confetti uh, symptoms. Uh, we often see our calendars really fragmented by invitations. And we don't have enough simple one uh, bigger block of time, perhaps two hours, three hours, four hours, half days, or even one entire day, which is meeting free. And uh, we find ourselves in this time confetti situation that Adam Grant has coined in one of his, one of his uh, TED Talks. Um, the cure for that, the practice we recommend, and you will recognize this is an acceptance test driven <laughs> uh, or specification by example type definition for a practice, is to when you find yourself that you do need uh, for your role, for your uh, motivation, creativity, to be productive, uh, uninterrupted focus time, give yourself uh, the chance <laughs> to have a meeting free day. And of course, this requires an agreement with your team and key stakeholders. Can that happen in your context? Uh, I do work with teams who are more customer facing and really service oriented teams who do need to respond to those uh, customer requests. For those of you, uh, a complementing practice, uh, which we don't have yet on screen, maybe a future talk would be a customer hero role. So most of your team could block out time to be meeting free and you may have always a role that one team member wears to respond to customer requests uh, during this uninterrupted time. The benefit of this practice is really uh, to gain uh, possibility to create something more complex, to go deeper, or just to have a free reflection time. And personally, this is one of my favorites. So going forward, who should set these agreements, Tomomi? Uh, should individuals just block their calendars and have a meeting free day? Right. Most of our work really requires coordinating with other people. And what's critical is to balance the needs of the collective, the, the business needs, as well as the preferences and constraints and priorities of the individual. And so one great practice that we recommend for this is the about me, to write an about me for yourself. Uh, it's also known as the personal user guide or the personal user manual. Um, and I have uh, your about me here to share with everyone today, Andrea. And so if you look at Andrea's about me, just in a few seconds of reading, you can get a sense of how she likes to work and what helps her be at her best. Um, for example, as one of her collaborators, um, I have, I have come to know very well that Andrea really needs to stay active and does not do well when she's sitting down all the time. And so maybe I take a chance to remind her, ask her um, if, if she's moved or if we're working for like a long work session, for example, make sure to take these breaks. Um, and I end up benefiting as well. Um, and so the about me information is valuable when onboarding new team members, even asynchronously during the interview process. But it's also great for people that you've been working with for a long time. And it's really interesting to note the similarities and differences with your own practices. Sorry, with your own preferences. Um, going back to collective needs. Andrea, do you want to talk about how we know or like identify which meetings we can remove? Absolutely. So some of you might be wondering, OK, these were like quite high level practices, but I have a calendar packed with meetings. Where should I start? So I really invite you with this practice, which might be familiar for those of you from the Kanban domain, those who use Kanban boards already. Uh, to think about what are the key processes that help you do your work today? 
and what outcomes are you working towards? Process equals workflow, it's a different name for it. Um, prioritize one that really uh, consists of a lot of meetings. Here we have an example. You might be working in a development organization where you are growing rapidly. Uh, and you, as a software developer, you are invited to interview future colleagues. Uh, and this might take up a lot of annoying time and interruptions in your calendar while it's super important. So this would be an opportunity to map a hiring workflow and think about how would a fully remote company do this? Uh, a company with a culture of asynchronous first communication, like, for example, GitLab uh, is some a company that we follow closely uh, and they are sharing a lot of useful practices. But any other team can really do this. So in this hiring example, you may think, OK, instead of running the first round of interviews, maybe invite participants to send in a short video about them and also to perform a coding challenge and check in their code in a shared repository. And then through code commenting and also some videos, uh, for example, using a tool like Loom, we can start a conversation with those candidates without the need to have a call with them. So we can respond with a video. We can set a more challenging uh, code challenge if they perform well on the first phase. We can fully exchange messages in non-real time, thereby freeing up our calendar to still have focus blocks and schedule these uh, follow-ups with our candidates at our own time. So as long as we agree how fast each candidate should proceed in the process, uh, uh, an SLA or an SLE in Kanban language, a service level expectation for our lead time for um, um, a candidate we are deciding to interview, we can run this entire workflow asynchronously. So I hope this inspires you um, to move forward. So what if we have this great process worked out, but me as an individual, I get stuck with a step in this workflow and I would really like to speak with somebody, but I don't want to bother them. I don't want to interrupt their focused time. Should I call for a meeting? Before we do that, there's a great practice we can take from the developer's playbook, which is rubber duck debugging. So talk to a duck actually verbalizing and just explaining very clearly what is it we're stuck with, even if it's not a real human, actually may help to unblock us and help us move forward. And of course, it doesn't have to be a duck. It can be explaining the idea or your problem to your dog, your partner, somebody in the house, etc. The idea is really to externalize what you're going through at the moment and see what happens there. So that's one thing we could try. Um, but of course, I love my duck, but say that I don't have enough information or authority to do it by myself. For example, planning an important meeting. Is there a way to do it without lots of real-time meetings? Yeah, my favorite uh, symptom of uh, overloaded calendars is to have meetings about upcoming meetings. For example, why not have a meeting to plan our off-site retreat? <laughs> so many of us in the Agile community might find ourselves facilitating events. What I recommend is even uh, a sim very simple practice uh, of a shared document or for those of you who use facilitation tools, uh, something like a session lab, where you can use uh, a written format, uh, written proposal about the event, and you can start discussing, commenting, you know, for example, different facilitation tools and techniques that you plan to, to uh, run the event with, perhaps an open space format or a liberating structure string. Those are ideas that you could start by documenting your ideas and really inviting your co-facilitators and also your participants or colleagues impacted by the proposal to comment and chip in. As long as we give a time box to these long form written proposals, uh, by which time we would need to move towards a decision, by which time uh, the, the comments or the suggestions should expire, we can make a lot of progress before we need a final meeting, perhaps to really just do a dry run uh, of how we will facilitate an event. So absolutely, this is one practice. And then, however, writing is not for everyone. Uh, so just remind ourselves that we are diverse uh, human beings and uh, we might be intimidated by writing down a long idea, uh, almost perfect proposal. Uh, are there any other formats we could use? Yeah, exactly. So writing might not be your cup of tea or maybe 
in the creative process, we're not quite ready to start documenting our ideas. And what we want to do is collect input from everybody, in which case it's great to benefit from a visual medium. And so it's a screenshot of Mural. Um, I'm sure everyone in this room by now um, in the past few years has gotten to know Mural or Miro really well. And so there is a clear difference between having a visual medium versus a long form text document. Um, and the, 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 the canvas really is a great way to get a lot of ideas on the table. And you've probably used it in workshop settings, but this can be used asynchronously as well. So you as the requester of information and engagement would set up a canvas provide very clear instructions, an invitation on what, what you're looking for, and then send it out to your team with a clear deadline. So that's one way to, to use the tools that we already have access to. Okay, so let's say that my canvas now has a lot of ideas. It's become a bit messy with lots of post-its. Everyone is excited about our retreat. What do I do next to synthesize the ideas and move forward towards a proposal? Now, do I call for a meeting? Not really. Avoid running a meeting just to present the summary of what has been produced asynchronously. Um, instead, um, you know, many of us used to record meeting. Perhaps you find yourself uh, in that situation, but we never have time to watch long recorded conversations again. So instead, what we invite you to do is to think really short video walkthroughs think three to five minute summaries that you could uh, use to highlight some key points as a result of a more lengthy asynchronous uh, brainstorming process. So for example, if you're a product owner and on the canvas, you ran a sprint review spread out over the last two weeks, a longer sprint review, perhaps concluding a release with your uh, stakeholder group and also customer user group, then you could highlight some already affinity grouped, some key ideas, some insights from what customers, users and stakeholders others were generating and running a really uh, short uh, uh, summary that you again can not only share out as a static video but even better again using a tool like loom or any other interactive video tool you can invite comments and also responses uh, like smileys or even video responses or written responses to certain parts of your video so this can really save a lot of time yeah, I also want to add that there's a nice trick here as well in that this is a practice you can do without having to tell everyone or convince everyone to work asynchronously. You can kick it off by yourself, share it out, and see if others will adopt the, the practice. This is a very low-hanging fruit one where technology has co come a long way. It's quite interesting field, like very hot tool-wise at the moment. And staying on this topic of using multimedia, um, the examples we discussed were quite forward moving, you know, being in productive mode, but at work, it's also important to create space for our team to slow down and reflect together in a more spacious way. And I think this is something the agile community understands really, really well. And so here's an opportunity where we can use tools uh, that are already on our phones, like WhatsApp or Telegram um, and use it like a game of telephone. And what we really like to do called audio reflection round is to have a prompt for a reflection. And then that audio message shows up in everyone's chat. Um, and then there's an invitation to add your own voice and people can listen to it in their own time. And then when they feel called to contribute, build on what other people have said and add to the conversation. And so a uh, great, a uh, moment to use this would be to say, after we finished a very intense sprint, and instead of taking like a very packed two hours retrospective, why not try a more spacious one week long kind of unraveling retrospective um, so that people have time to think and also to bounce off of other people's reflections. Um, so this is really great one for slow, slow thinking, um, and also you get a sense of the personality, the mood and the humor of a person, uh, which really adds to the richness of the conversation. 
Absolutely. So, so far in our talk, you have seen hopefully a few inspiring ideas on how you can free up uh, your calendars and really create more focused time blocks where the rest of the collaboration happens asynchronously. Uh, Tomomi warned you, warned us that it, our work at Async is not only just about uh, moving every collaboration asynchronously. We are not saying that. We do believe there is a place uh, for synchronous, real-time collaboration to really uh, create lasting memories is one great use case. Like a concert, <laughs> we have seen some celebration, team bonding event uh, coming face to face uh, once in a while. It's really strengthening those uh, personal relationships. The metaphor we often use, and we would like you to perhaps play with, is uh, fire. So uh, fire could be uh, an opportunity to express emotions, whether they are, uh, you know, um, negatively charged or more forward moving, exploratory or celebratory emotions. It can be anything that uh, might be easier to ex express face to face or at least real time. We all know perhaps from personal lives how testing, texting or, uh, you know, messaging in Slack or in a chat tool, sometimes our mood or our intent can be misunderstood. Even if you use lots of smileys, it's far from being as rich as jumping on a call or ideally on a video call and talking one-on-one -on -one directly. Uh, giving feedback, one-on-ones. Uh, there was a great talk uh, today on one-on-ones before us. Uh, if you haven't seen it, please watch the recording. Uh, one-on-ones are still an amazing tool to develop bonds and maintain uh, collective learning, network learning, uh, and learning organizations. A great one for synchronous um, uh, opportunities. Urgent decision-making. Again, the fire comes in. We all know from technical uh, domains when we need to respond within a shorter uh, time time window and restore service where we need to troubleshoot or even act to a critical complex situation. The last point is when we face recurring issues, when we are on a canvas or on a retrospective and we notice as a Scrum Master, we notice that the conversation keeps coming back to the same topic, the same impediment. Asynchronously, um, all these signals are pointing to the need to come back and address the conversation, uh, putting the topic on the table so to say. So there might be one more opportunity <laughs> to come back together. Yes, exactly. And that's with the objective of celebrating our team, celebrating accomplishments, each other to bond and to have face-to-face -face special moments. Um, I think a lot of people will have had the experience in the past six months to a year, the role of a team retreat has really increased in importance. And so, yeah, we have two photos on the slide. On the right is me with my team in Japan. On the left is the async team. So that's me and Andrea with Stefan meeting in Budapest for the first time after uh, almost a year of Zoom, some Zoom and a lot of Telegram messages and many, many Google Docs. Um, we had the opportunity to come together for a weekend where Andrea hosted us in Budapest. And yeah, I want to say also that just because we are face-to-face -face or working in sync, there's actually great opportunity here as well to bring in async practices. So for example, in, in Budapest, sometimes we were sitting in a cafe um, in a time-boxed session and everyone's working at their computers in the same Google Doc but in different parts and so say we work 20 minutes on a piece of text and then we come together and share so that's like layering these async modes of collaboration into sync moments uh, which I think is like a real power play that our community can really really push push forward and Another benefit of that is that once we have that really dense time together, and once everyone goes home, kind of back to our normal routines, there's just such a strong foundation there. And after our Budapest retreat, for instance, our project really was able to pick up momentum because everything was already documented. We had had the discussions on who would do what next, what is important, um, so that there was just a lot more freedom and like energy to to go to the next level. So one question that we often get asked a lot, Andrea, is who gets to decide? Whose job is it to propose ideas? Is it managers or HR? 
is it their, their job to decide how we should work? We know this question very well, unfortunately. <laughs> it's still a challenging one when we decide, should we go back to the office or which locations shall we work from and what boundaries we need to place around that. Um, it's not going well, to say the least, when this decision is centralized and imposed on us as knowledge workers. So uh, as facilitators of teams and as team members, I encourage you to use a self-facilitated practice. We call it team agreements. You may know this already a lot. We have come up with a simple format around your time use um, that you can use uh, from the async uh, practice uh, database. This is who is collaborating uh, including your customers and key stakeholders, dependent teams, of course, here. What is our work and what are the key workflows? Remember the practice around starting with those workflows, which are very meeting heavy or synchronous time use heavy and really checking if that's the right thing to do. And then when are we collaborating? Here, the key thing is about critical response times, both for the expedite situations where there is a crisis or a, an urgent uh, situation of urgent work request, or when in general, what is the uh, out or accepted response time in your team to external customer stakeholder queries and internal team member queries. And obviously try to move away from instant pressure on each of you to monitor the chat, respond to WhatsApp, Telegram, email, all that. So avoid the notification overhead. So we invite you to explore this canvas. Our talk will be recorded um, and uh, let us know. Uh, come to our website and explore the team agreement practice in general. And final moments before we open up to conclude, there are many benefits of asynchronous working. We would love to hear what are the benefits to you. We believe you are already experimenting with this. We found that focus time and getting deep work done is the number one benefit. The second one is making it possible to fit work around life and prioritize your life and your individual personal uh, and family uh, needs, and also more transparency. Uh, it creates more uh, opportunities to really learn, uh, create learning organizations, and also to uh, the foundation of transparency to transparency is create agile organizations. So at Async, we've looked at the skills that teams need for remote collaboration and mapped them to six domains. We didn't want to just push a framework onto you. Um, so we're not gonna go into this today, um, but you can see on the left, we have the, the six domains and on our website, we have descriptions and the benefits and how to get started for each of these domains. And today what we did was like try to cover all of these with uh, about a dozen practices. And of course there are dozens and dozens more. And what we're curious is, yeah, what. What caught your eye? What's something your team might want to start experimenting with? Which brings me to the last slide. And yeah, just as a kind of a free resource, um, we have this template with instructions for a team workshop because the model can be used to assess your team. Where do you think we are? Where do you think we need to go um, to help the team decide because we cannot change everything all at once. This is never a good idea. Um, what's the one thing we can start changing and start experimenting? Um, yeah, so that's our website. We're also quite active on LinkedIn with a small but growing uh, community there exchanging different practices. And yeah, we would really love to for you to follow us there and exchange with you and the Agile community on how to interact better online and async. And with awesome. this, I think we are ready to, if we have time, to take one or two questions. And thank mm -hmm. you so much for those of you who stayed with us <laughs> throughout. So indeed, uh, over to you, Rob. Well, oh, fantastic. Thank you very much, Andrea and Tamami, for that inspiring, I think, talk there on, 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 on thinking differently about how we use our time. And there are a few questions that have come in, so I'll, I'll, I'll fire a few over to you if you don't mind. A really good one, mm -hmm. um, Yuha, who said, um, you know, we talked a lot of talk here about replacing meetings, those scheduled events, I guess, that we tend to anchor ourselves down in to work more in asynchronously to, to eliminate that from our calendars. Uh, you have said, could we maybe replace the word meeting with communication? Something I've noticed that you have brought up here, you know, instant messaging. I work in a Slack culture. It's always pinging away at me as I'm working away. Um, and that's often quite noisy and distracting. Could you maybe think about 
how asynchronous working could get you away from being tied to Slack or instant messaging tools? <laughs> Brilliant question. Thank you for uh, raising this. Uh, personally resonate with it. Uh, it does impact even our team. <laughs> so we are not mastering this yet. We do have um, uh, on the meta level the question, um, you know, meetings are indeed collaboration opportunities. You know, there is a famous quote, uh, you know, really well spread on LinkedIn. If a meeting should, could have been an email or a Slack message, then there is no point in having that meeting. Think about collaboration, individuals and interactions. The FIRE test, is this an, a collaboration where we expect some emotionally charged opportunities, whether to celebrate or to discuss something with deeper context? Perhaps consider meeting, uh, but it's indeed in how we communicate. Slack is uh, more about, um, you know, perhaps uh, it's a notification platform, but it's not a good repository to store knowledge. You will see that in our manifesto, we share a lot about better ways to store knowledge in searchable and long term formats. Um, when you go to our website, so consider other tools for long term uh, knowledge management in your organization. And lastly, uh, notification batching is a practice we didn't have time for today. Uh, muting notifications is a healthy one. And perhaps you could explore using the team agreements, how you could, uh, what would be allowed response time or acceptable response times. And do even people on your team need to read everything on Slack? Do they need to respond or do they only need to read things when they move to that long term? perhaps yeah. wiki-based uh, uh, knowledge repository. That's when they need to read information. There's a dark side, I think, of work anytime, which is not work all the time. Um, and I think a lot of organizations actually fall into that trap. And current day tools that we use are, are not really helping us with this. Um, we hope they will. Like As the practices advance, the technology, like the design, should be more, more, more human and like features should stop us from doing that. But for the moment, as Andrea said, um, teams agreeing, what are the constraints? What is expected res response time is probably a piece of conversation that, that that's missing and is what would really move the needle in terms of not being flooded by, by notifications. Yeah, thanks to mommy. And I kind of got that leads on to the other main question we've been asked, Evelina. Um, I'll try to summarize your question, if I may, Evelyn, and, and hopefully get it across for you. Again, it's something that, is there a danger of almost creating too many asynchronous activities? And I guess is what Evelina is saying, you know, that actually you fill your time with activities and tasks, uh, and you almost don't have time then to do those. How would yeah, you absolutely. Just because we're not in meetings doesn't mean we're, we're not over flooded with, with work, right? Um, yeah, so it comes down to personal task management and also, I think, stopping our own instinct from thinking we need to respond in the moment, which is our learned uh, instinct of synchronous working that I think prompts us to work this way. And then you respond quickly and then the other person responds. Um, and so we just get caught up in this, in this crazy cycle. Yeah. And adding on to that, as many in the Agile community will say, uh, uh, creating transparent workflows for your team, so visualizing all your work together, and notifications can become work. So there is automation we can uh, set up around our Kanban boards or visual boards where uh, a request in a chat or an email coming, which is just maybe perhaps seems like an innocent request, it can turn out to be one day or even one month uh, piece of work for the team. So making sure that our backlog is not yet committed, those requests can come into the backlog, but we have a selected, we have a com committed point in our workflows where we make a conscious decision to respond or to discard or delay this request. Fantastic. Well, thank you both very, very much. Uh, I'm sure we could talk and ask loads more questions. Uh, I'll give everyone at least five minutes, though, to get a quick break before the next uh, speaker. But so thank you very much, Andrea and Tomomi, uh, for your inspiring talk. And um, you mentioned the word workflows there. So that's what our next talk is about. And you also mentioned the transparency. And I keep hearing this theme. This word is something that comes below. Transparency is a cultural uh, aspect. The way we work, I think, is key to many of the things that we're talking about today. Thank you very much, both of you. Thank uh, you. And all the very best. Thank you, Great Rob. Thank, you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks and for coming. All in five minutes' time.
for our next speaker, Julia Vesta, who's going to talk about putting the flow back into workflows. See you very, very shortly. Thank you.